Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of MEON Talks. I am Yazan, your host for today's episode, and joining me today are two very special guests, the Secretary General and the Deputy Secretary General of BIJMUN that is happening this year, inshallah. Uh, Sami and Jawan, before starting anything, I just want to welcome you guys, and it's an absolute honor for having you guys on this episode. Thank you, Yazan. I've been looking forward to this, honestly, the whole week, and I'm so glad you, know, you reached out and we can make this happen. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We appreciate it so much. Of course. Uh, so, you know, there's something that we all wanted to know. And, you know, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, we want to know some, we want to hear some insights about uh, BIJ MUN, like where it's at right now. But before we get into that, um, we want to know your guys' experience. You know, how did you guys even get into the MUN in the first place? Uh, Sammy, if you want to begin and just share your journey into the MUN and uh, what initially inspired you to get involved. Sure. So, um, as a lot of people know, my story isn't as inspirational as some others. I joined because, you know, my friends were there, as most people do nowadays. I joined because our school had, you know, some really cool international trips. Uh, that's the main reason why I joined. But I, I always did. I always loved debating. It's something that, you know, I always loved arguing. My parents said, no, I always love arguing. Um, and so I went to Berlin and that just sparked this love of MUN and, you know, representing a country because it was a different type of debate. And after that, it spiraled out of control. I mean, I chaired at JAMUN, my second conference, chaired at the other JAMUN, chaired at AGS, 404, ethics, and then the leadership positions uh, opened up in our school. And unfortunately, uh, I got it. So here I am. MashaAllah. Uh, Jawan, same question. How did you f- get uh, introduced into the whole MUM? Well, my brother first um, joined the MUN club, like, before COVID. And I always used to, like, wonder, what is MUN? And then I did a online debate session with my history teacher. Um, and she, she was, like, the one who's running the club and everything. So she told me, come join MUN. So knowing my brother did it, I was like, let me go do it. Let me try it out. Let me see what it is like. And then um, I also knew it was like really good for your college application. So I was like, I should probably go check this out. And then I went and I just found myself every sing- like falling in love with the club. And like every single day, if there was like the club, I would ask my mom. I was like, Mama, I've got MUN after school. Got to pick me up after. I need to go. I can't. I have mm-hmm. to go. So, yeah. Uh, Sammy, since you just said um, like uh, something regarding your uh, experiences, that you have held various leadership positions in different MUN conferences, uh, about that, could you share a memorable experience or a lesson that you learned from one of those experiences? Um, there's a lot of conferences to think about, but definitely something recent that happened was, I'm not going to name the conference or the people or anything. It wasn't memorable, memorable because it was exciting or something like that, but it was memorable because of uh, how tough it was because I was chairing and basically there were some issues of delegates uh, AI checking each other's resolutions. And um, there was this delegate, a new delegate, obviously they're nervous, you know, it's their first time, the first time they're speaking in the conference, you know, in front of everyone Mm -hmm. and uh, they're representing the resolution. And one of the delegates calls out, you know, interrupts saying that their resolution is completely AI. When they just oh. come up to my desk, they say, look, look at this 100% AI. And mm. the delegate, you know, they didn't know, like, what happened. They're like, what's happening and what's happening? And, you know, they start, like, mm-hmm. tearing up and things like that. And obviously, the situation is super high tense because, you know, everyone's watching. It was a committee of 40, maybe 40, 30 people. It was a lot of people and everyone's watching. And, you know, they're standing there in the front. So, obviously, in that situation... It was, you know, very tense, but the only thing you can do is try and calm it down, try and, you know, make it seem like everything's fine. So just, you know, telling the delegate, you know, calm down, sit down, and then, you know, letting them continue because, yeah, it was it was tough, but everything worked out. That's great, to be honest. So, uh, Jawan, you know, we've heard that you participated in uh, MMA conference as a delegate. Uh, could you share a memorable experience or lesson you've learned from one of those conferences that you've been to? Um, yeah, I would say a memorable, exper- a memorable experience would have to be like a really funny one for me. Um, I went to Solo and 
uh, we were debating like this delegates um, resolution and you can clearly tell it was all AI and the delegate went up and stated that it was fully AI and the oh. resolution passed and mm -hmm. we all knew it was a joke and it passed as a joke but it was just the funniest thing ever and like funniest experience I've ever had because he went up and told everyone that it was AI and then started like defending how like AI is gonna bring like mm -hmm. um bring us into the future and everything so it was just a mm -hmm. funny experience and like a lesson that I've learned which have to be always participate always try and speak as much as you can even mm -hmm. if you're shy um and you stumble at first you're gonna get used to it so always just try and participate mm -hmm. Sammy, since Joan just mentioned a very good uh, advice that I believe that the people that are tuning in right now, the new delegates should actually, like, you know, listen up. Uh, Sammy, if you want to, um, you know, share a advice that you would offer or give, give to the newcomers in the Amiran community, what would you, what would you give an advice? 100%, 100% participation. Honestly, there's mm -hmm. two things. You can call it the two Ps. Uh, I was thinking right. about it last night. Preparation and participation and right. the way it goes is i think it's 30 percent preparation 70 percent participation you know mm -hmm. the things like position papers and things like that you know some of them some people think it's useless like oh my god i have to do a position paper but you never know when that information can come in handy and a lot of people forget sure. that you have to represent your country's you know beliefs not your beliefs so you can't just go with what you want to do you have to go with what your country wants to do mm -hmm. and some people think that chairs don't notice that but definitely i can tell when a delegate is just going off on their own and not what their country's thinking so preparation is also key but participation is mostly what matters because even if you make mistakes you're not going to learn if you don't participate i mean you know in every mun conference people notice that there's like 15 20 delegates who just don't participate at all i don't get the point of that because i mean unless you're going to speak you're never going to learn anything so speaking you know especially semi-moderated caucuses where you have to think on your feet uh you know you don't have a script you don't have a speech to look at you don't have the information it's all in your head those are the best learning opportunities you can ever get in mun that is really true um so now sammy of course we've heard that you won a, a best delegate at berman which is an international conferences uh, international conference and seeing as you both have been into an international conference, you know, I want you guys to walk us through this whole experience and uh, yeah, just uh, tell us. So, Sammy, how was that international conference like and winning a best delegate since it was your first conference, I believe? Yeah, it was my first conference. Uh, it was in 2022, so that was um, quite a while back. But uh, I think one of the main differences of an international conference, not many people have been to an international conference, first of all. But one of the biggest differences is definitely, you know, diversity and seeing how other people think or how other people speak. Because mm -hmm. over here, it's like when I go to a conference, the people who come, I mostly know all of them. Like I've seen their faces. I know right. how they talk. But when you go to an international conference, it's a completely different experience because, you know, the way everything functions is slightly different. You know, even MUN, the procedure, it's slightly different, even though we use some, you know, use time and it's slightly different. So. And mm -hmm. definitely it's that diversity and how people, you know, talk and how they, you know, interact with each other. Definitely it's such a good learning experience because, and you know, not many people get the opportunity to go to an international conference. Right. Luckily me and Joanne do have one in our school, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a great lear learning opportunity to, to like converse with different people, you know, different backgrounds, things like that. Mm -hmm. Joanne, same question. Walk us through your whole uh, experience when it comes into an international conference. Tell us, how, how was it like? Um, well, when I first, I recently been to the international conference. I went actually the 6th of March. I went to Prague. Um, and at first, I was really hesitant because my topic that I was given, I was quite uncomfortable with. Um, it was like combating the discrimination of women against them in the MENA region. So um, at first I was, uh, I don't know, I was really uncomfortable with this, with the topic and everything. But mm -hmm. when I got there and um, I, I was like working with all the different people, I realized that 
they had a they had way more knowledge on the um on the topic that I thought they would have and it would just made the whole more, this whole situation more comfortable and um going to the international conference there's a lot of different um different things that they do there that I really loved and um it was like a whole new experience that just um really broadened my eyes on MUN and gave mm. me a whole new aspect of MUN mm-hmm. Jawan, another question. Uh, so we've heard that you won a best position paper at uh, Jeddah MUN. And, you know, what, for a delegate to win a best position paper, you know, they have, they must do a lot of research. So, and unfortunately, a lot of delegates now are suffering with this whole research thing. So how do you, like, w- what is that one message you want to say and then to the rest of the delegates that are suffering from the, from the, that they're suffering from researching and, um, just tell us how, how it felt like to even win the best position paper. You know, walk us through that experience. Well, when I first won that position paper, I was shocked because I didn't think mm. I was I would win it because I spent two hours writing that position paper and two I hours. knew other people in my um, mm. committee spent like two weeks writing it. Um, mm. But I feel like if you want to write a good position paper, you need to get the key facts. So if you're in mm. an ECOSOC committee, like make sure you research the right facts for the equal stock like mainly focus on economics and the social part of of your country right. and mm. um like for each committee there's like different um facts you need to research so make sure that you search the right facts and then you implement them in your um position paper and also mm. Don't make your position position paper plain. Something that I like to do in my position papers is um put graphs, put pictures, right. just make it more creative and spruce it up a bit. Um, I, mm. I feel like um I went a- after winning the award and I went to the chair and asked him what I did to make um like to make me win the award, and he said right. because you were creative, you put you you had a lot you had a lot of writing, you put um mm. but you like broke it up and put like pictures and graphs. I couldn't not make you win the award. So I feel like have the right facts, make it like creative, make it your own, mm-hmm. and you're sure to win. So a question for both of you: What is that one experience that you would? Like you would like, right, I want to rewind back time and I want to live that experience again. In other words, what was your favorite experience? You know, Sammy, if you want to tell us. Um, obviously, like a lot of MUNs nowadays, they're really good. Like, for example, AGS, that was a really good one. Right. I would love to go back there. But, you know, a really, you know, how do I say this? Like amazing life, not life changing, but certainly, mm-hmm. you know, it helped me a lot definitely was either berlin because that was my first conference or Mm -hmm. aisj the first one um i was co-chairing it was my second conference to be honest i wasn't qualified to co-chair that time uh Mm -hmm. i was so nervous i didn't even know procedure i mean joan knows i messed up half of the procedure uh Mm -hmm. she was in my committee but he messed up so (laughs) bad (laughs) <laughs> so bad. definitely uh you know i tried that's the best part you know learning making mistakes definitely mm-hmm. those things it helped me i didn't make those mistakes again but definitely mm-hmm. those are you know john Lynn, the first one or uh berlin my two favorites right john same question what is that one experience that i would like you would rewind back time just to live that experience or that conference again um i would have to say the Prague when I went to Borg Moon, best experience ever. Like just mm-hmm. meeting international students, getting their aspect on the topic. It was just like an eye widening like experience. And then I would have to say our conference, Bismun, even though it was an internal conference. Right. Um, it was such fun. That's where I got one of my awards. Um mm-hmm. it actually challenged me. I think it was that was my second conference. And it challenged me. I particip- participated so much. I think I was giving. Uh, I was like receiving POIs for a whole hour on my like resolution, oh. and it made me like, th- like made me th- um think quick on my feet, and like made mm-hmm. me um more confident in my like answering my answering POIs and everything. So I think those two conferences would be my best experiences. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh, Joanne and Sammy, let me take you guys back to AISJ, where Sammy was your chair and Joanne was the delegate, right? You guys were in the same committee. So, um, Sammy, how was Joanne as a delegate? You know, tell us. Be on. <laughs> jo- Joanne, uh, I think that was mm-hmm. her first conference. Uh, she was, uh, firstly, she was super nervous. Don't Even be shy, I was- be honest. Mm-hmm. Even I was nervous. We were all nervous. It was our first conference, and uh, I didn't really even know her back then. But we have uh, this mutual friend. Her name is Zoya, and she told me, "You gotta help Joanna. Mm-hmm. Out. You know, you gotta give her the chance to speak and things like that." He did so... not help me. He did <laughs> okay. not help. Wait, 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 wait. So I would send her notes like on the second day. I'm like, Joanne, this is when you speak. Joanne, speak now. Defend your clause. Uh-huh. <laughs> and... And eventually she did, and uh, you know, eventually she uh, kind of broke out, you know, broke the ice, and uh, eventually it was all right. But that first mm. day, that first day was uh, something I'm never gonna forget. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joanne, uh, similar question. How was Sammy a chair to you? Tell us, be honest. On the first day, he did not help me at all. Okay, mm-hmm. on the first day, I was silent. I had no idea what I was doing. I was sat in a corner, like so nervous. He did not help mm-hmm. me one bit. I would go to him, ask him questions, He's like, do this, do that. But he didn't make sense. Like I was so confused. Um, like mm-hmm. I, it was also my first conference, so I had no idea what to do. I didn't know what to expect or anything. So then mm-hmm. I called Zoya after the first day, and I'm like, he didn't help me at all, at all. He did not do anything. So she mm-hmm. went and screamed at him. So then the next day, he sent me notes. Um, and the thing is, the notes weren't even like useful in a sense. Like she's like, just go speak now. Like, what am I supposed to say? Like he didn't. He just said speak. Yeah. What am I mm-hmm. supposed to like talk about? I tried. I tried. But um, yeah. But like, I feel like him not helping me made me like learn on on my own and made me more confident, right. independent. So I'll give him that. But he did not help at all. That was my plan all along, guys. That was what I was trying sure, to do. Exactly, exactly, sure, exactly. Sure. So now is the time we've been all waiting for. Time the time I've been waiting for. Um, is now your current now the current focus of BISJMUN. So we want to take you both back in time to where you know the idea popped up in your mind where you want to start your own conference in the school, right? So Sammy, uh, starting with Sammy, please walk us through from. What level one, level two, where you at right now? Just tell us, walk us through. How did the uh, MUN start? So, Just let us know. Yeah, I got you. So basically, how it works is uh, the in our school, the seniors, uh, this is their mm. final year, right? So they had to leave their MUN right. positions, and um, obviously, the position, the positions opened up for a completely new team. And already, right. our MUN is slightly lacking in terms of experience. We don't have that many okay. conferences under our belt uh, as a whole. So the positions opened up, and uh, obviously, I think I have like most chairing experiences in in our school uh, currently. Right. So I got the uh, SG position, and you know, we already had this plan that we are going to do a conference. You know, our MUN mm-hmm. director said, you know, we are doing this conference, but it's up to you guys to plan it. So once the positions opened up, obviously me, Joanne, uh, a lot of others, we applied, we got the roles. And mm-hmm. the date, uh, we, we all said we wanted to do a conference this academic year. Uh, you know, it was tough choosing a date because we didn't have much time. It's been like, we have, a, I think, a time frame of two months we've had to plan yeah, this true. conference. The, yeah. the next month, we're all working extremely hard. I mean, even now, we're not in school. We have a break, but we're all working like extremely, extremely hard to late right. night trying to get all of this work done. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's been a journey, but there's still a long way to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joanne, so a different question. As the Deputy Secretary General of BIZMUN, what is like your key responsibilities and contributions to the conference? Um, I'd say I kind of do everything. Like Sami just throws something at me and I mm-hmm. do it. Um, okay. Like from food to planning to like planning, mm-hmm. like I had to do sketches for the mm-hmm. table layout. For the for each committee, um, I had to call some restaurants um to ask if they would like to cater for our conference. Um, right. I had I made the application forms. Um, I'm gonna go through them and accept all the delegates. Um, mm-hmm. it's it's an array of things. Like you can't just give one responsibility for the SG or the dep- uh, deputy secretary general. Um, right. 
it you you kind of do everything you tip your you dip you dip your toes into everything make sure that everything mm-hmm. is good i mm-hmm. think my favorite thing about being the dsg is getting to scream at everyone <laughs> That's if you good, ask yeah. sammy in all the meetings i'm just screaming at everyone <laughs> oh, she is scary she's loud and scary mm-hmm. <laughs> So, um, Sammy, you know, same question. As the Secretary General of BISJMU, and what is your main priorities? And, you know, just walk us through. Again, so same thing as Joan. Basically, you do you do a lot of things, but um, one of the biggest things... But you things, don't scream. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't think you scream. I'm yeah, calm. okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, uh, do a bit of everything. And one of the bigger things I do is, you know, manage everyone. So, like, once a week, I'll just sit when I'm bored and uh like mm-hmm. delegate a bunch of work i'll make a list of things to do and then you know you do this you do this you do this you do this uh because you know a lot of the work isn't specifically designed for a role like for for example the applications forms is is the dsg supposed to do that or the sg so right i just make a list of things to do and i say you know you do this you do this you do this you do this the work i've done so far is uh recently i sent all the and... emails out to all the schools because mm-hmm. um, right. you know our conference is invitation only, so it's for schools only. Uh, apart from yeah. that, uh, I've made a new procedure booklet. It's called Bisman Procedure. It's basically mm-hmm. a combination of um, Harvard, MUN, and Feynman. It's quite, it's pretty simple. Oh. But uh, I wrote okay. it. Uh, Joan helped me with it. A few others helped me with it. Uh, so that's going to be interesting and uh, a lot of things. But basically, yeah, managing everyone. Sammy, since you just mentioned something very interesting, this is a new procedure you could say. Could you just like briefly and like you know some you know just briefly explain it to us? Yeah, sure. So uh, I think when you do when I first did Harvard MU and I was super confused with like the right. subtopics and the general speakers list, and I was like, I just want to do Simon, like I just want to do like speeches, lobbying, this that. True. Uh, True. I did a few conferences with Harvard MU and now, and I AGS, right? did find AGS was like Harvard. the yeah. AGS yeah. and 404, both of them were Harvard. Both of the mm. jam ones were Thymon, and our internal right. conference was Thymon as well. So I was super used to that. I was, you know. So mm-hmm. eventually, I did like the concept of having subtopics and these semi moderated caucuses. Because mm-hmm. originally, semi moderated caucuses aren't included uh, in some procedure that we used. Uh, it was a new thing introduced by a bunch of JKS students to me. So, mm. okay. Uh, like, I. Firstly, I didn't really like the idea of like people screaming at each other without the chair's intervention, but eventually I got used to it. And yeah, it's it's not very complicated. I think most people will get used to it. Uh, you know, there's just mm. a few rules on, uh, you know, the subtopics and how the resolutions are debated. But closer to the conference, the procedure manual will be shared with everyone, and the chairs. I'll be chair uh, training the chairs on how to chair. You know, using the procedure booklet. It's not very complicated, so I think, uh, you know, everyone uh, should be fine. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Joan, can you provide some insights into the current progress of BISJMUN from your perspective, obviously, and uh, what are you guys currently focusing on in terms of preparation and organization? Um, currently, we're looking to find um, food sponsors to cater mm. for all of um, all two days and right. we're working through the applications um we're receiving applications um every day now so just going through them and checking mm-hmm. um and mainly we're just getting everything set up like table layouts um getting lanyards ordered um right. flat cards ordered just everything in prep for the conference we um we got everything like the um the procedure book and mm. everything done before the break. So now it's just ordering all the equipment that's needed and getting Good. the food and applications mm-hmm. that are needed to be done. Great. So a question for both of you now. Uh, what is the most, like, I mean, most important thing when it comes to planning a conference? You know, Sammy, if you want to say. There is a lot, a lot of things, but um, I think a mm. lot of th- you know, one of the biggest things that people overlook and now me and Joan have definitely realized is having the essence Good. of, you know, strong teamwork in your team. You know, like forget, yeah, you, know, you have the food, you have mm. to order everything, but having a strong team is really what matters. And, you know, we had a rocky start. I'm not going to lie. We That's had a rocky right. start. I won't delve into the details, but, you know, everything wasn't running smoothly. Yeah. 
but you know we, right. we came up we all came together we made a new sort of not a rule booklet but something to guide us all on how we should you know conduct ourselves and things like that you know that right. definitely helped us mm -hmm. and um we're working extremely you know professionally now we're working towards the same mm -hmm. goal getting a conference mm -hmm. done in the span of two months you know we all have to focus right. and realize that we do not have enough time but exactly, uh, yeah. when you're looking at the planning aspect it's definitely sponsors are a hard thing but you know the environment we live in there's a lot of people that we know who have connections to you know restaurant owners and things like that so eventually it doesn't become that hard like Joan, she knows i don't know how many people but uh <laughs> we're gonna get some good sponsors mm -hmm. and good, good. uh yeah things just yeah just those two things otherwise right. it's all uh, mm -hmm. Joan, same question what is the most important thing when it comes to planning a conference um i'd have to say communicate like sami said communication and teamwork um at, at at the start um our communication was a bit rocky um and we'd not communicate well there's big people who wouldn't um wouldn't be known uh, wouldn't like know certain things but we made this rule book mm. um and we're sticking by it it um and i feel like communication between the sg and my other DSG, Mustafa, is really important. I tend, I tell them everything that I do, make sure that they're up to date with everything, um, to make sure that everything is um mm -hmm. moving slowly, and also, um, respecting um all the members of like of the team. I tend to make sure right. that all of their opinions are noted and they're heard, and I try to make sure so. that everyone gets a little of their like idea so say like um the president of ga comes and says he wants to do one thing and then the treasurer can't, can't comes right. and says um says he wants to do one thing i i'll find a way to merge both of their ideas and make sure that um everyone mm. is um pleased so yeah. i feel like communicating with each other having respect for each other and um teamwork is really something that is needed in um planning a conference or, or else it's all going to go up in flames mm -hmm. that's actually really creative joan and uh, you know thank you for that that's actually we need we need people like you nowadays i mean now thank you so much sammy here's a you know of course so here's a here's a tough question for you sammy not really a tough one but like something that really got me interested in vijj and since you just in introduced the new procedure uh, something I want to ask you is what makes BISJ MUN stand out? Like, why is it so special? You know, just tell us. Okay, so I think the biggest thing is our conference, the team. We don't mm -hmm. have that much experience. You know, we're working off the other conferences we've been to. So, uh, me personally, I have me and Jawan have a lot of experience, uh, especially with international conferences and you know mm -hmm. conferences, uh, you know, locally. So we have all the good and all the bad from all the conferences that have happened now. And we're mm -hmm. trying to take all the good, obviously, take, take, all, take all the good and put it into one. Now, the mm -hmm. issue with that is, again, I've said this again and again, the time. We had two months. It's not enough time. Not, you know, not nearly enough time. I think AGS took eight months to plan. You know, that was an amazing mm -hmm. conference. We don't have that much time. And, you know, another thing now is, as you know, if you go to a conference now, most people know each other, right? So mm -hmm. we're trying to encourage, you know, you know, more beginners and more experienced people so they can kind of learn from the experienced people because also you don't need experience to win best delegate, right? You just need right. passion. You just need to know how to speak, things like that. And uh, hopefully one of the bigger things that every, uh, comes out of this is, you know, we know how we have a successful conference and eventually uh we have a bigger conference maybe something domestic with other schools other countries flying in that's the ultimate goal mm -hmm. so joan a different question uh something I, I have been wondering uh which is now normally school muns okay if you want to call that they have a theme or a focus you know not necessarily a school i mean like some of the muns have a theme or a focus so if BIJ has a theme or a focus, uh, so what is it? What, what is BIJ's theme or focus this year, if you have any? Um, you know, because I've seen the special committee that you guys have, yeah. and I'm interested to know more about it. This special committee mm -hmm. is actually 
made by our president of the GA. It is his baby. He mm. will literally cry if we take it out. Okay? He, okay. like, mm. made this by himself. I'm sure he would, like, be able to, like, rant and rant on this, like, creation of this new theme. But Sami wanted a themed committee. He wanted something new. Something, um... Something mm -hmm. new for our committee. Something that makes us stand out. So, um, he asked the president right. of the GA to make, um, this theme committee. And he... Mm -hmm. And he made it. And the overall theme was, um, building a safer, uh, future. So, all of the, um... Mm -hmm committees are the topics are around um the mm -hmm. overall theme and this themed committee also so yeah but i swear to god if we take out that theme committee the president of the ga will literally cry <laughs> so you guys better not take it out okay so for our final segment uh which is actually uh entertaining uh some viewers questions all right so we got a question coming from uh Sidra. Uh, what is the most important thing when it comes to plan? Oh, that's actually actually answered that. Okay, another question from Zoya. What is the best outcome that has come from MUN for you guys? I guess it's a question for both of you. Oof, uh, it's Sammy it's a say. hard yeah, it's a hard question. Um, definitely right. a lot of skills that I have now, public speaking. You know, talking with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was quite shy before. I'll be honest. I was uh, introverted and things like that. But MUN definitely helped me step out mm -hmm. of my shell. Uh, you know, talk to more people. Uh, you know, express my feelings more. Things like that. And mm -hmm. also forming new relationships, uh, ships with people. I mean, Joanne, I, I wouldn't even know her if it wasn't for MUN. And you know, going to conferences right. with people. It's it's always fun. It's always a fun. You know, memories. You make memories and things like that. So definitely, those two things top of my list. <laughs> Joanne, um, we got a question. We got a question coming from I'm um, the real sender. I don't know. Um, so who's who has done the most work in preparation for BISJM one? Um, in your opinion. In your opinion. In my opinion. Joanne, I think you know who that is. I'm not saying you. I'm saying myself. Actually, no, no, no. I feel like <laughs> mm -hmm. everyone has done their bit. Um. But obviously, mm -hmm. there's certain people who, um, right now, like head of ad admin at first, they can't really do anything because there's nothing to do. So, um, right, like that, that like role is more like for the conference. So I feel like everyone has a certain mm -hmm. point where they need to do so much work. But I feel like who ha who has done the most work has to be has to be Sami me. And my fellow D a DSG Mustafa, um, and mm -hmm. um, and the president of the GA Alex and the vice president uh, Sara, yeah, I feel like that mm -hmm. we're like a group who who just make sure that everything is done. But yeah, I don't think there's like one person who's just done so much because it's a team effort. Right. So I feel like everyone has done right. what they need to be to do. Yeah, can I can I add to that? Can I add a small bit to that? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. So you know, in different uh, timelines of when we're planning the conference, more people have work. So, for example, our event coordinator right now, I'm just asking her to come up with plans for things. I'm not asking her to do any you know specific work. So right now, she won't have much work. But a month into the conference is when she's gonna have to start ordering things, budgeting, things like that. Right. I mean, our head of finance, for example, right now, right. I, all, all I've asked them to do is make a spreadsheet and you know work mm -hmm. on some merchandise things but mm -hmm. more close to the conference when you start sending out the invoices when you start managing the money coming in the money com going out and all these things his work is going to increase but right. at this moment right now when we're doing all of the you know procedure booklets the emails the the posts the instagram posts all these things uh mm -hmm. definitely you know myself i'm managing all the work you know my work is going to stay stay busy all the way long you know, Joanne has put into a lot of effort, you know, working late nights, you know, making the seating plans, doing a lot of things that I just asked her to do. Uh, mm. You know, our, the other DSG, Mustafa, I think him, he's he's been outstanding, really. Uh, he's had to do a few other roles that he wasn't meant to do because, you know, some people weren't in the country and things like that. So he's been mm -hmm. multitasking a few things. Uh, Sara, uh, the vice, the, the president of the, the co-president of the GA, 
Uh, she writes, mm-hmm. you know, amazingly. I, I asked her to make the delegate guidebook. Uh, mm-hmm. Not only was it written amazingly, but you know, it was formatted very nicely as well. You know, the looks of it. Um, right. Alex is obviously quite busy. He's an IB. Uh, he came up with all the topics. There's not a single one he didn't do. Uh, he came up with everything. Uh, mm. Yeah, and we're all working, you know, extremely hard together. Obviously, the head of media, when uh, towards the conference, you know, you start posting a lot more things, their work will increase as well. So right now, there's not a lot of work for a lot of people. The work is concentrated between, you know, a few people. But uh, towards the end, towards closer to the conference, everyone's work is going to skyrocket. <laughs> Now, since we're mentioning the whole EB team, this is the final question for both of you. Um, what is the what is a what is a message you would like to send to the whole EB team? Um, Joanne, you wanna start? That like I appreciate you all so so much. Like even though I might not show mm-hmm. it in the meetings, because I do send people out for timeouts if they're getting out of hand. And yes, scream. I do scream. Everyone mm-hmm. in that EB will tell you that I scream so much and I send people out for timeouts mm-hmm. if they're like getting on my nerves. Um, but I appreciate okay. you so, so much. Just keep up the good work. We're nearly there, two months ahead. Um, all we need to do is communicate, um, teamwork, and make sure everyone is involved and we're gonna smash it. Mm-hmm. Sammy, what is that one message you wanna send out to your EB team? Firstly, I wish everyone could, you know, have been on this podcast. I feel like everyone deserves the chance, you know, to say what they think. And obviously, you know, everyone's working extremely hard. But, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's important to also enjoy this journey of planning a conference. Like, I've yeah. been losing some hair, honestly. Uh, you know, I've been seeing some hair falling around. I think I'm kind of <laughs> stressing. I'm 14, but I'm mm-hmm. losing hair already. But I think <laughs> you know, from now on, it's important to focus that this journey is supposed to be fun as well. And uh, mm-hmm. even though, you know, we've had our issues, I'm extremely, extremely excited to, you know, have this team with me, ex- especially right. because they're not experienced, you know, they have fresh ideas, you know, they aren't thinking, oh, AGS did it like this, oh, 404 did it like this. They have yeah. new ideas that yeah, yeah. they, you know, they aren't thinking conventionally, they're, they're thinking out of the box. So definitely, right. I'm super excited to be working with everyone. I, and I just wish that everyone could have been here. That is amazing. So there you guys have it. These were your uh, these were the Secretary General and the Deputy Secretary General of BIGMUN, Sami, Jawan. Again, it's been an honor having you guys on this episode. And to be honest, it felt like five minutes, but now it's actually been 37 minutes. So, you know, they always say the good times finish up fast. But uh, yeah, this concludes our uh, podcast episode. This is an honor. You guys have any final remarks, final message? Thank you, Yazan. This has definitely been, you know, extremely fun. It was so, honestly, mm-hmm. you're an amazing person. It was great talking to you, you know, talking behind the mm-hmm. scenes, you know, planning this whole mm-hmm. thing. It was great talking with you. You made everything super easy. So I'm just glad, you know, this all worked out. And hopefully in the future, we can get a post-conference update on how everything went. Yeah, thank you so much. Inshallah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it so much. Lovely meeting you. It was amazing. Um, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Of course. Bye-bye.